Good morning, everyone. It's Friday the 27th, March 2009. Wind swell is in the water caused by some wind that's also coming down our coast. Welcome to the winds of spring. This pattern is going to stick with us for a little while. I wanted to show you everything on the models that's coming together to make that happen. So it looks like we may also see another burst in a wind swell on Monday from this type of a pattern and also possibly again on the second. Not a whole lot happened in the southern hemisphere. A few duds down there, but I wanted to show you a little glimpse of that. And also what's making this all come together for the wind swell scenario up here in the northern hemisphere. This is what's happening right now. So if we take a look at the weather models, we can see why we're getting wind swell today and why we have those winds along the coast as well. We've had a low pressure system moving down through the interior of the America West. We've got high pressure ridging out in the Pacific that's fairly strong moving toward our way, causing gradients along the coast from north to south. So as we move along in time, we can see that that low pressure system will continue to move away from the area, move along more toward the east. High pressure wants to move into the area. Things will be relaxing just a little bit. We can see then once we get into the weekend, looking at around Saturday's time frame, we see those gradients relax quite a bit, moving more from a, a west to east trajectory. Uh, trajectory. Still high pressure though over the area. Then as we move a little bit more in time, we see here on Sunday that another low is expected to start moving down from Canada. With that strong high pressure on the Pacific, that could cause more tight gradients along the coast and of course stir up then more wind swell that we might see by Monday. And here we look a little bit further in time. We've got on the, mon the uh, Sunday afternoon and the Monday time frame more tight gradients forming along the coast. Take a look at the weather models. This is what's happening right now. We can see where Southern California is located and a little bit of wind swell off the coast. That was caused by also tight gradients just a few days ago. High pressure, the eye of the storm in blue, golf fetch, not going to bring us anything way too far to the north. As we progress over time, we can even see that golf fetch just going to dissipate, be landing way up high into the north, not going to bring us anything. Wind swell dissipates along the coast. A little bit of something exciting seems to appear on the 48-hour models, but that's pretty much a Westpac uh, too small of a system to really bring us anything. So we move a little bit more forward in time, about 72 hours out though, we can see a windswell fetch starting to form near the coast. Now it could be in response to those north-south gradients that would develop again when that second low starts moving down our system. This would be bringing windswell then on Monday. Moving toward the uh, Tuesday time frame, we can see that that windswell would probably still stick around, be moving away from the coast a little bit, and that west pack dud turns into something up in the Aleutians, but really nothing promising for us. Looking a little bit further out in time though, we can see what looks like, if you can trust these 144 hour models, looks like another wind swell fetch would start to form out in the, uh, the Pacific, it would start to move toward our coast, and I really hold a lot of hope for this. These long range models get to be quite dubious, but you can see it would probably bring us something around the second or the third. Taking a look now down to the southern hemisphere, not a lot of hope down there, a little bit of a dud system moving toward more of the south. And then if we look over time, over the next 24 hours, looks to be moving toward the east. The Southern California latitude's around 120 degrees. We can see that system's just too far to the east. It's got to get some northward movement to bring us anything. It doesn't look like that's going to happen as time moves on. That guy's looking to slam right into Chile. We'd be lucky to see anything out of that. It'd be very sporadic, so I'm not counting on anything, putting it in the forecast either at this point. Looking out a little bit further on a long range here, 72 hours out in the Southern Hemisphere, some of the stuff moving along south of New Zealand across the Southern Ocean. That's not looking to really be too favorable for us, so I'm calling those duds at this point right now. Looks like that jet stream down in the south is going to keep them hugging the uh, ice cap near Antarctica. So not really a whole lot to be thrown our way, but I'll keep an eye on it, see if anything does develop. So that's how things are shaping up right now. We do have wind swell along the coast. It'll be fading into Saturday. A little bit of southern hemi does come in actually on Sunday, but it's not a whole heck of a lot. Something I mentioned in my SoCal surf report on wetsand.com on Thursday. So we're not looking at a whole lot of surf over the weekend, but a little bit of something rideable on Sunday. Nice weather should be, uh, with, you know, last throughout the weekend. We are looking at a light offshore flow. We've got those north to south gradients, typical kind of for the, the springtime for Southern California. So we may see some winds pick up again on Monday. And that's when we could see some uh, wind swell. All also form along the coast. Right now I'm counting on that wind swell to start bringing an increase to the west facing breaks, but not a whole heck of a lot out of it. It's not that significant. Uh, another wind swell fetch possibly could hit us around the second and looking toward the southern hemisphere. Anything we get out of there for the near term is looking to be fairly small. Once again, we're in the spring and it's a time of waiting. Have to see how this all progresses. Until then, if you want to check out all the swell ETAs, the wind, weather, tide, and more, just check out my SoCal Surf Report at wetsand.com. Uh -huh.